Welcome to Coffee at the BI Diner. I'm Tim Lord, and welcome to episode four. This week, we had an opportunity to interview uh, an artist that we do a fair amount of work with, uh, Aaron Scannerhorn from Indianapolis. We've really enjoyed getting to know Aaron over the last year, and I hope you do as well. Enjoy. Welcome to uh, the BI Diner. I'm Tim Lord, and uh, today we have the amazing uh, honor to interview uh, an incredible artist, uh, Aaron Scammyhorn, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing well, thanks. Well, Aaron, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself and what made you want to become an artist. Sure, yeah, I grew up with a, a family of artists. Um, mom was an art teacher and uh, dad was a ceramic artist. And mom, mom did some of the, the pottery work with him as well and, and they still do that to this day. Um, so I kind of grew up with uh, that creative bone um, and then took that into to college, decided I wanted to follow in mom's footsteps and be a, an art teacher, um, finished that degree, then realized I, I'm not a big fan of middle schoolers. Uh, so <laughs> immediately went back and uh, finished a graphics degree and uh, kind of worked more in the digital realm and um, really developed a passion for digital illustration through that and, uh, and the art of um, marketing and, and advertising and creating great labels to sell products. That's uh, great. What's the best part of your job? Best part of my job. Um, I love getting a physical product um, out the door, um, being able to pick that up on the shelf, see it out in the world, see people enjoying it, displaying it in their homes. Um, so it, whatever that physical product is, whether it's a consumable or a piece of art, it's that, that end result of the physical piece that I think is the most rewarding. Yeah, it gives you a sense of pride, I would imagine. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Coming from someone who can't even draw a, st a stick figure, I mean, <laughs> I know what good art looks like, and that's why that's why we do work with you, you know. So, uh, art as a career, upside or downside? What what is what are the upsides and the downsides? Um, you know, I think anytime you have something that you're super passionate about to the point where it's like you do it all day for your day job, you do it all night for your for your passion. Um, that's the biggest upside in the world that you get to do what you love for a living. Um, yeah. So that's, that's the upside. Any down, any downside that you would share with us? Um, downside of it. Um, you know, the whole realm of marketing art and, and your creative work is a, is a, a bit of a beast trying to wrangle that idea of getting it in front of the right eyes to, to get enough people to, to share it and, and like it and, um, all the, the jazz that comes with all that stuff. It's yeah. A bit of a headache sometimes. Yeah. So I see you are um, active on social media. And these days when we're all quarantined and working remotely, um, you know, people are becoming more active. You're, you're in on uh, social media. And what, what is your favorite platform uh, to, uh, to show your work? Yeah, definitely Instagram. Um, it's such a visual platform. It's such an easy, easily shareable um, piece of, uh, that it's just – Instantly, you got your graphic up there and people can immediately share it from there. Um, yeah, and, and I, I try a lot, pretty hard to be um, steady with that and, and get stuff out on a regular basis. Um, and I've, I've noticed the most success on that platform when I'm able to um, have some sort of consistency with posting. Yeah, from a commercial standpoint, uh, is uh, in LinkedIn, does LinkedIn do anything for you? Um, not really. Uh, there's been a handful of times where I've done something that's kind of a little more like civic minded um, that's kind of gotten shared from some different organizations and that gets passed around. But ideally, the, that traffic trickles down into to Instagram and Facebook and some other platforms. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So did you realize that here's an off the cuff question. Did you realize that you are actually five degrees? You've heard of six degrees of Kevin Bacon, right? Sure. <laughs> you're you are actually five degrees uh from kevin bacon did you realize that what no yeah, all right so i'm gonna walk it down for you okay Love it. Love so it. all right so uh the the first part of the question is what did you what do you and gloria gaynor have in common Great. you know do you know who gloria gaynor is i do indiana all right, all right. so here's how you became fi five degrees of uh kevin bacon um kevin bacon was on um a sunday morning show with jane Polly. Okay, it's called Sunday Morning on CBS. The same day, she also interviewed um, Gloria Gaynor, all right? So, Jane Pauley, Gloria Gaynor, that's one, two. You did some work with a band called Cake. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Cake remade Gloria Gaynor's biggest hit, I Will Survive. Oh, right, so yeah. You are five degrees from Kevin Bacon. There you go. <laughs> nice. That's great. So, <laughs> so how does uh, 
how does a, an Indianapolis artist um, end up doing work for a Sacramento based uh, band? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that started around the time that I just started doing some, uh, some gig poster work and, and screen printing my own posters. Um, I had just reached out to some local uh, show promoters, um, the guys over at uh, do, do, do Through and Seven and MOKB Presents um, helped to make that connection to where when they were coming through town, I was like, hey, I'd love to do a poster for this one. Let's see what we can do and connected with Live Nation. And um, we started with just one. And uh, that was the first one that was, uh, oh, the girl's face. Um, it's kind of that vintage uh, um, sort of like uh, Argyle pattern in the background. Yep. And they were, such, they were such fans of it that we've, we've done uh, seven posters together now, I think. That is great. Well, um, now you can go. Now you can go to your next social event and, and just brag that you and Kevin you are, are, are like this. <laughs> uh, so one of the things that you really like is beer. All right. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to ask you two questions. One, you have a, a thing that is amazing. And there's some videos not only on your um, uh, on your poster making. Uh, I want to tell everyone who's watching your poster making, but also on the question I'm uh, uh, about to ask is what is the, uh, the craft uh, brew doodle crew? Explain yeah. that to the, to the people that have not seen it. It is a, a musical chairs style co creative collaboration. Um, it's a, it started as an effort to just to do something a little more collaborative um, with other creatives in the, in the Indianapolis area. Um, and I had this idea of, of all working on the same drawing together, but that evolved kind of to figuring out the logistics of it to being, you work on a single sheet and it passes, you pass it around the table every 10 minutes we rotate. So each piece is still a collaborative uh, piece of art, but um, we're just moving them around the table as we're working. Um, yeah. It started to get successful enough that uh, Indiana City, the brewery where we meet, um, started to put the, the best ones on cans once a month. Great, right? Well, I've seen the video, and anyone else who's watching this can just uh, can um, uh, I'll put it in the link below. Uh, uh, go on uh, YouTube and, and check it out. It, it's really well. The the video is really well done, uh, oh and yeah, it was it's pretty awesome. And uh, um, you know, I as you know, we do some work together, you and I, in uh, in a brewery, and uh, I have proposed it to them. They love the idea, and uh, after COVID and life settles, we're going to we're going to reach out to you guys and have you do something for us, which is yeah, that'd be pretty great. awesome. It's pretty yeah. awesome. Okay, so uh, what is your favorite kind of beer? Um, I'm a big barrel aged beer guy. Um, if it's got a super long boil and it's thick as molasses and uh, super boozy, I'm happy. You, you, so you like you like the darker beers for sure. I do, yeah. But this honestly, this uh, the Craft Brew Doodle Crew series is really the the one like catalyst for getting me into a little bit more of the IPA vibe. Um, when it's that hazy one, that's really kind of the aroma and some of the flavor of the hops, but not so much of the bitterness from the hops. I'm I'm dialed in right there as well. Terrific, terrific. Well, you and I just did a, a, a couple of labels and one of them, like we mentioned uh, in our conversation prior to this, has just gone to market. I'm going to grab a four pack and, and make sure that I get it out to you uh, yeah. so you can try that. It's a little lighter. It's a blonde. Yeah. Um, so you live in Indy. Do you do uh, any traveling for your job at all? For your career? Uh, I haven't much. I've been, been around a couple times. Um, some different client locations um but a lot of stuff is local we work with a handful of, of local organizations like the zoo and the indians yeah oh, no kidding great great so um what has covid done to your business you know this industry is is pretty blessed to be able to continue on um as is sort of you know the the transition over to working remotely was was very minimal pain um and it's it's been awesome that we've still been able to continue doing our thing just yeah, kidding. we've uh, we've been telling our our marketing is based on you know we've we've been working remotely for our clients for almost thirty years. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's nothing. It's nothing new to us, you know. Um, so what uh, I looked at um, a little bit of your social. Uh, what is a uh, mask up indie, and how did you get involved with that? Yeah, so that was uh, through the Arts Council as well. Um, they were reaching out to a handful of local artists to create some imagery around. Um, encouraging people to to mask up when they're out and about and um 
they were looking for a diverse set of, of people, uh, different styles, different people, um, just trying to get that image out there as much as possible, um, kind of normalizing something that obviously there's been people who have been resistant to the idea of it. Um, so if they can continue to see that wherever they go, ideally it becomes less of a headache and less of an argument to get someone to put a mask on. Right, so your artwork is uh, out in the community on um, uh, mur murals, uh, on, in print, how, how is it being displayed? Yeah, they passed out posters to a, a lot of businesses around downtown, um, and then they also made it um, available. So if you were a business and you wanted to display one, you can go pick one up for free. And they're printing big um, giant banners of the artwork around downtown as well. Oh, that's great. Again, driving around town, seeing your artwork, that must be cool too. Yeah, definitely. Right. Um, Star Trek or Star Wars? Uh, I grew up Star Trek, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my dad and my brother, I was the youngest. Um, so they were all super into it. So of course, I had a little brother. Uh, John Luke, John Luke Picard or Captain Kirk? Oh, see, I think I'd go Picard though. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. He had he, in my opinion, he had much more style. Anyways, yeah, you can go around and going engage, engage for the rest of rest of your. Life. <laughs> well, I noticed also from social, you have a dog. We do. We have a, we have two uh, miniature golden retrievers. Named oh, Crockett and Boone. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, miniature golden retrievers. Now I have a golden retriever right now and I've had a, a golden retriever that passed away uh, uh, maybe eight years ago, uh, but I've never heard of a miniature golden retriever. Yeah, I hadn't either. Um, there's a, an old antique shop in town called Doc's Architectural Salvage that has um, a shop dog. And I met him when he was like 15 years old and still looked like a puppy. And I was like, what is this dog? <laughs> I need one. A miniature golden. Yeah. I was like, okay, done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had been up in the the, uh, the wine country of um, of California back in the the back in the early two thousands, and uh, I I came up this driveway, and there was this enormous dog, and I thought it was a bear. Uh, it was a, a, Mer a Bernese Mountain Dog, and I yeah, fell in love yeah. with him, and I actually had one for about eight years, nine years. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful dogs. So, <laughs> all right, um, just a couple more questions, then we can, we can send you on your way. Yeah. Um, who is the person in history that you would love to go out and have a drink with? To have a drink with? Hmm. Um, Andre the Giant. For sure. Andre the Giant. <laughs> Everyone, you've, you've heard the story of him, like, you know, just crushing um, cases of beer because he's such a big dude and the alcohol was so easy to absorb. Um, yeah. And uh, if, if for nothing else, just to witness um, a tiny little beer can in his monster hands. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a, a documentary uh, yeah. on Netflix about him, which is uh, pretty good. If you could go back in time and give 18 year old Aaron a piece of advice, what would it be? Mm, don't waste four years on an art education degree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, and, the money, uh, and the money behind it right right honestly yeah um you know i think that uh um i was really ready to to go down a couple paths um for moving and different careers and whatnot and i think moving to indianapolis was the, the really the the right choice um really almost ended up in chicago i'd even accepted a job in chicago um but man i i really do love indianapolis it's it's big enough to have a lot of the opportunities you could look for but small enough to not like get lost in the mix yeah so you, you create an art show and you want to have a gallery hanging up you can find a place to do that, that kind of yeah. thing. i love i love indy and i have i have as you know relatives in indy and uh i have some really close friends down in batesville so uh i try to get out there as as often as possible you know all right so Tell us three things about your about yourself that you know maybe even your closest friends don't know. Random. <laughs> closest three, friends. Three things. Three three things about yourself. Sure. Yeah. I uh, I grew up playing in, in uh, punk bands. I was a guitarist in some, bassist in some, uh, vocalist in a lot of them. Um, uh, had some crazy band names. There was a uh, tourist from Canada, um, Slow Children at Play, which eventually just became Scap. <laughs> and then, uh, we were uh, had a band called Dietrich. Uh, everyone called us Diet Rich. <laughs> <laughs> and there was uh, um, the fashion and crossover and been there. I played in a handful of bands. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's those great names. I think uh, <laughs> right? well, I never was never a really big punk guy, but uh, some of the names were uh, you know were amazing. I remember in college uh, there was a local band in southern in uh, in Massachusetts called. Uh, uh, the Lee Harvey Oswalds, nice. and uh, they open for the Dead Kennedys. So, you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, number two. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, man, I'm a big cheese head. 
uh, really hardcore about a, a really good aged funky cheese. Okay. Uh, a good epois. Um, just smells like feet, but man, it's delicious. Um, uh, well, what's another? Morbier is, a, is an interesting one. That, um, they milk the cows in the morning, and it's not enough to make a full wheel, so they cover it with ash, and then they milk the cows in the evening, and they finish the wheel with the other half. Um, so this cheese has this like line of ash through the middle of it to complete the wheel. I'll, ha I'll have to check that out. You sound like a foodie. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And lastly? Yeah, what else? Um, uh, we have a, an Airstream that we like to travel around in. Most of my close friends know that, but uh, um, that's a, a big part of our life as well. Um, after we, we decided to, to push aside hand screening or screen printing our own posters uh, because it took so much of our life, our evenings and weekends, we're just always at the print shop. We're like, let's just sell all that. Let's buy an, an RV and, and go travel around and camp on the weekends. So, well, Is it a new one or is it a vintage one? We bought a new one, yeah. We were looking at fixing up an old one, and I'm not handy, nearly handy enough to pull that off. So <laughs> we got a big 28-foot um, international um, signature uh, that's like our retirement plan. Our goal is to have it paid off by the time we're ready to retire and just go live in it and travel around. Yeah, good for you. Good for you. Well, you know, uh, van living is the, is, the, is the new fad. I have a, 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 a copywriter that I did some work with uh, up in the Bangor, Maine area. Her and her husband just sold their house. Yeah. And they had bought a, um, uh, like, like a sprinter, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, they're going to work remotely from the, yeah. from the country, you know? So Love it. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for taking some time here at the diner. I really, really appreciate it. And I love the work you do. I'm a big fan, and uh, I appreciate how you support us. Why don't you tell the people that are watching where they can find you, uh, you know, what your Instagram and uh, your emails and your websites are. Sure. Everything is under Ron Luhorn. It's like R-O-N-L-E-W-H-O-R-N, -E Ron Luhorn. It's a, a name I came up with in college that was a mix of my three names, Aaron Lewis Scamahorn, just pieces of that. Uh -huh. uh, so it's, it's got the best SEO. You know, if you Google Ron Luhorn, I'm the only thing that comes up. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Instagram and Facebook and, and Gmail and all of them are around the horn. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate you. Awesome. Likewise. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Well, that was great. And we'd like to thank you and Aaron for joining us here at the BI Diner. You know, we stand in awe of artists like Aaron who create amazing artwork uh, that make it easy on us to present to our clients uh, quality, quality product. Uh, and uh, we'd like to thank him and all of the other artists that we do work with. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here at uh, Coffee at the DI Diner. And um, we will uh, we'll see you soon.